Hi everyone, I'm Gordon Half, Technology Evangelist with Red Hat. And in this video, we will talk to you about application possibilities. I'd like my guest, Coco, to introduce herself now. Hi, I'm Coco Janicki, and I am a Director of Product Marketing in the Application Services Business Unit at Red Hat. So Coco, let's start by talking about the problems. What are the challenges that people are facing today when it comes to application development? Well, the problem I hear again and again and again is how to increase velocity. Uh, competition is just stronger and stronger every day. And all I hear about are teams needing to get their applications delivered faster and faster and not just get them to market, but then be able to churn on them rapidly and keep up with changes in the industry, changes in the market, changes in technology. It is all about velocity. Let's talk about developer productivity specifically. What is getting in the way of developers being as productive as they could be? I think the most frustrating thing for developers is not being able to develop. If they don't have the tools that they need or they're working with tools they don't particularly like, it can be really frustrating and get in the way of productivity. Also, if they have to wait for their environment to be set up, again, that's just wasted time. And once they get used to an environment, having changes to that environment, uh, having to get used to a whole new set of tools, again, that slows them down and it's frustrating. Now, traditionally, when we talked about applications, the assumption was this was software that you installed on your computer. And uh, but obviously, with the rise of hosted and managed app services, we are in new times here. What do cloud services mean to you? Yes, cloud services are pretty much a game changer. Um, for me, the most important thing about cloud services is that there is a real separation between what developers use and who has to manage that service. And it really gives teams the opportunity to get the best of both worlds. They get the tools that they want, the environment that they like, but they don't have to do any of the work to support that. And there are a few big wins there. Um, the first, uh, which speaks to Velocity, is that the services are there, they're available. So teams can start developing right away. They can get started immediately. Um, but also organizations don't have to invest in uh, building up skills in how to manage infrastructure. They don't have to put precious resources on managing the infrastructure. They can basically outsource that. And teams have also figured out that in the long run, it's often a lot cheaper because you only pay for what you use. So what's the relationship between cloud services that might run on-prem, they might run across a variety of different public cloud providers, and a cloud native service that runs on a specific cloud provider? Good question. Um, it's, for the most part, they're very complementary, and they offer different experiences. So services uh, like our services run on many different clouds and provide a consistent experience from cloud to cloud to cloud to on-prem. And for some people, that's very important. Um, in contrast, services offered by the large cloud vendors are very much focused on that one cloud. And at the end of the day, the cloud vendors <clears throat> want to sell more cloud. So it's a very complementary relationship. When we talk about services, one of the tugs of war that always seems to be going on is between this near infinite choice in open source ecosystems and the desire to narrow things down to a streamlined set of prescriptive choices. How do you think about being opinionated and curating options while maintaining flexibility? Um, really, it's a matter of choice. And I've met with teams at both ends of the spectrum, and it's it's a matter of opinion. Uh, there are some solutions that are very opinionated um, and curated where the, the developers of the service have made some informed decisions on how the service should work, which makes it much easier to use, easier to adopt, but you do lose some flexibility. And some teams prefer the simplicity some people prefer the flexibility because they have edge cases that they want to address. Um, what's very important with the curation and opinions is who is making those decisions. And I think as teams are wading through the choices, it's very important to consider 
who's making those choices and doing that curation and whether they're really setting things up the way that they that in a way that they really trust. So we've been talking at a high level. Can you give some specific examples to maybe make this a little more real for people? Absolutely. Um, most people are looking to move to a container platform and pretty much the, the technology of choice is Kubernetes. But I think it's a universal opinion that Kubernetes is very difficult to use. It's very powerful. Um, it has thousands of dials, as we like to say. It's like walking into the cockpit of an airplane, um, which is great if you want a lot of flexibility, but a lot of people just want to deliver applications. So we offer uh, several Kubernetes services where we've made very opinionated decisions on those, those thousands of dials. So instead of it being like drive, flying an airplane, it's like driving an automatic car. It just simplifies it. Uh, likewise with our API service, um, if you want the flexibility to choose the underlying database, you know, maybe a managed service is not quite for you. Um, you know, we choose the database that makes the most sense since we're hosting it and we are managing it. Uh, we make that opinionated decision on which is best. Uh, similar to Kafka. Anyone that's used Kafka for data streaming realizes you need more than just Kafka to build your application. There are many other technologies that need to support Kafka. In our service, we've made those decisions. We've figured out what's the best way to do metrics and monitoring and the user interface and what kind of a command line interface you need. Um, if you want to make those decisions you know, and have the flexibility for that, you can do it yourself or our service, we provide a curated experience and we do that for you. Now, developers are clearly one target audience for cloud services. Um, could you net out the developer benefit and share with viewers other audiences and organization that this approach might interest too? Good question. IT ops is a, a persona that is also very interested in the pros and cons and the different ways of using cloud services. Um, for them, it's there are two major, major categories of benefits. I think a lot of IT ops people wake up in the morning worried about how they're going to get applications running on different clouds and support different clouds. And cloud services can solve that problem for them. They don't have to worry about that. I think another challenge for IT ops is often building out the ecosystem for an individual service. I mentioned that Kubernetes has a lot of technologies that support the Kubernetes engine at the core. Same with Kafka. There's an ecosystem that makes it possible to do data, uh, streaming data driven applications. If that is already put together, already tested, already running, already available, it simplifies the lives of IT ops considerably and they can focus on other things. And I think another persona that is very interested in cloud services is anybody who's lead, leading the business unit, uh, the line of business, the person who is focused on delivering business outcomes and, and getting apps to market so that they can offer more to their customers. They're going to see cloud services as a way to up the velocity, get there faster, and spend resources on building business applications, not on supporting infrastructure. So our viewers have heard all this. They're probably really excited to get started. So where do they go? How do they streamline and modernize their practices like now? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, because cloud services are delivered as services, they're already there. They're already ready, ready to use. So it's very easy to, um, to sign up and start using. Basically, the minute you sign up, you can start using the service and start building. Um, and it, you mentioned modernizing and streamlining applications. I know that's a major focus for a lot of teams today. Um, my recommendation would be to start looking at foundational services that really help move antiquated systems forward into the uh, 22nd century. Um, things like API management and streaming data are foundational, help you move into faster applications because you can get away from batch data. You can start looking at event-driven architecture and this will help teams modernize applications in the fastest way possible. Well, thank you, Coco. 
It was my pleasure.